Hello, hello, it's me, Jeanette. How are you? Hope you've been well. In today's video, I'm sharing how to do a quick junk journal. And I've done a junk journal video before, um, but that was more sized to my traveler's notebook. So it was traveler's notebook size, so it fit right into my TN, and I was really excited about that. And so I wanted to do another one, but at a different size, just because I got this gorgeous paper, and this was um, sent to me by a wonderful friend who included some beautiful snail mail inside. But I really wanted to save this uh, piece of cardstock. It's like um. I don't know if it was a manila folder before or what it was, but it was just gorgeous and I didn't want to throw it away. So I thought it would be just a really nice cover for a junk journal. Now, I know I've said this in another video, but I feel like junk, the word junk journal, the words junk journal kind of have like a negative connotation because I don't think the things I'm going to use are junk. Like I absolutely love <laughs> the papers and everything that I'm going to include in this junk journal, but I don't know. What do you think? Is it just me? Does it sound like, does junk journal sound like a bad word? Not a bad word, but you know what I mean. Does it have a negative, negative tone to it, like a negative connotation to me? If you have a moment, let me know your thoughts on that. So I trimmed down the cover. It was a little bit too big for what I want, just because some of my elements that I'm going to be using, like papers and doilies, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of on the smaller side, and I didn't want them to be swimming in, <laughs> in the cover of my junk journal. And I'm even going to trim it down even smaller in just a bit. But yeah, I just eyeballed it, kind of went with a size that felt right, and now I'm just going to add other bits and papers in here and I'm also adding this cute bag which is from uh, I got a postcard and it came in this bag on a trip that I took recently with my husband to celebrate our 10 year anniversary and so I really like the bag and I wanted to save it because it was from our trip and what I'm gonna do is it got wrinkled in my bag in my backpack so I wanted to crease it down the center with my scoreboard this is a little like mini Martha Stewart scoreboard and I just want to make sure my crisp, no, my crisp is clear. <laughs> my crease is crisp and clear. I wanted my bag to still be functional in my junk journal once it's bound, stapled and bound into my junk journal. So I am cutting, trimming off a piece of the top of the bag. So now it has a pocket. It'll have a pocket once this is stapled inside of my journal, all secure and nice. So I thought it was good because it was still like, it still has a practical use, so it's pretty and it's practical. I love how easy junk journals are to make. And you know, this is the same process as making a regular notebook, except with a notebook, all of your pages would be equal and even. And all you do is just crease your pages down the center and then put them on top of each other. And then you bind them all together with either a sewing machine or there are different binding techniques for journals and notebooks that you can look up on YouTube. Or you can just use a long reach staple or a swivel stapler or like an anywhere stapler. I think they're called like anywhere staplers and bind your all your bits together and you get a nice little journal, super easy, super fun. And actually it's it's really fast as well. Now this thing here, this step that I'm working on is completely optional, but I just wanted to do this because I know that once the journal is bound and assembled, it was gonna bother me to have this flappy part of my bag just loose and I, I don't know, I wasn't gonna be, be able to like do anything with it. And so what I'm doing is I took a um, page out of a coloring book and I just folded it in half and now I'm going to line it up and kind of cover that piece of the bag and then once this is all bound inside of my journal it's going to have like a whole functional page that I can actually do something with versus having just this flappy piece you know a flappy page in my journal and that was really going to bug me so yeah totally skip this it's up to you but this is a solution in case you want to add a bag to your journal maybe a side of your bag is torn or wonky so this is one solution to cover it up and still be able to have a full functional page in your junk journal Next up, I'm adding this pretty paper from my stash. I'm just folding it in half and adding it to the pages of my junk journal. And I end up trimming this in just a bit because it's too big and it's poking out of my uh, cover 
too much and so it just need to be trimmed down a smidge and then I'm gonna be adding some doilies which I'm gonna change my mind about in just a second <laughs> and then at the end of the video I'm gonna change my mind back and that's just the funniest thing about the creative process because you know you go one direction and then you change your mind completely and go another direction and then you just end up going back to the beginning <laughs> so you know it's one of those things Next up, I'm adding a piece of this aqua felt, and I was really feeling the felt. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, I just ended up changing my mind. I might go back and add it maybe later after I bind everything together. Maybe I'll make a pocket out of it. I don't know. I was feeling it, and then I wasn't feeling it. I think it might just be the color, not so much the idea of felt, but felt would be a cool element to add to a junk journal because then you can also add um, some flair to your felt and that would be cool because then you could have like some fun flair in your junk journal as well although that might be a little too bulky but still it'd be cool you can add some patches to your felt I don't know do all sorts that'd be really fun next up I'm gonna add some sparkly tool I love this stuff and there's so many colors available on Amazon at least the ones that I've seen like I've seen a really nice blue like teal one so I will try to find that for you because it's just stunning it's gorgeous and this is another coloring book page which I've trimmed down one thing that I love about junk journals is the unevenness of the pages so I really like when the you know each page is a different size because you can see the pattern on the next page and I am going to move this, uh, the coloring page, I'm going to move it to another section of the junk journal because I feel it just pairs better with the um, florals behind it. And I'm also going to get rid of the doily and the felt and the sparkle tool for now. I don't know, I just wasn't feeling the vibe. <laughs> so I got rid of it and I'm adding some more pattern paper. Next up, I'm adding some musical sheets, and I think this is probably one of my favorite things that I've ever purchased uh, at a thrift store, a charity shop. And these are, I've seen so many of these types of books, just music books at the thrift store, or also um, maps, you know, atlases, or even like old vintage dictionaries, like those would be really nice to incorporate into junk journals or just other paper crafts so always take a peruse at the you know uh, the book section at your thrift store they're really and you can find some really cheap things sometimes they're like 25 cents so it's worth a look so I have a bunch of these black and white striped bags because I used them at the last planner meetup that I attended and I did a little mini workshop <laughs> at the meetup and so all the kits, like the workshop kits, all the contents were in, I put them inside of these bags and so I have a ton left over because it was just so much cheaper to buy them in bulk and so I need to figure, I like I need to figure out ways to, creative ways to use these bags up <laughs> so I thought I would add them to my junk journal and to do that I'm just trimming them down so that they fit inside of the journal and then I'm going to bind them together with washi tape and add them as some pages <laughs> some pages in my journal and they're still gonna be functional because it has you know like little opening at the top so I'll still be able to put some goodies in there. I'm not sure what just yet, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> also, you'll probably see these striped bags again in a future tutorial. Maybe do a bag flip or some snail mail or some kind of flip book if you have any ideas for what I should do with all of my stripey bags. Please let me know. I am all ears. So I have added my striped bag to my junk journal and now I'm going to add some Planner Society paper that I've had from when I was on the design team. Do you remember that guys? Oh my gosh, that was such a long time ago. Let me know if you, you remember that. But yeah, finally using that paper that I've been hoarding. It's super cute. And I also wanted to use some of these dashboards that were inside of my Happy Planner, this old Happy Planner. I think it was from 2016, and I didn't, I didn't end up using the entire planner. I feel like I start off really well at the beginning of the year, and then 
at the end of the year. I just kind of stop or I end up buying a new planner. And so I thought these little dashboards were really pretty and you can trim these up and even frame them and put them in your craft room or like in your bathroom. I don't know, they're beautiful. And so I wanted to add these to my junk journal. And so I'm gonna do the same technique that I did with the paper bags. So all I'm doing is putting them side by side and just fusing, binding them together with some washi tape. And what's so funny is that I am considering, at this point, I'm considering changing out my entire cover and using this as my cover instead for my junk journal because it's so beautiful. I really love the foil, the silver foil with the florals and also like just the craft. Isn't it like I'm is just adorable. <laughs> but I ended up just sticking to my original cover, but it does need to be trimmed down a bit because I don't want it, I don't want the cover to just like overwhelm the inside. So I'm just trimming this down super quick, make it in smaller, and then I'm going to bind this together with my long reach stapler. So I wanted to add a piece of ribbon to my journal because I wanted like a tying and untying element to it. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I just thought it was a good idea at the time. And so what I'm doing is this is what it's going to look like once it's all bound. So I'm going with this look. I feel like, I don't know, like it's a secret that I'm untying when I, when I open this. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just being weird, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Now it's time to bind my journal with my long reach stapler. And what I'm doing is I just lay all of my pages flat in my journal, kind of line them up. I wish I had a binder clip to hold this all together because I'm holding it with a death grip so that nothing shifts around while I'm stapling it. And the reason that I'm flipping this over is because you want the smooth side of the staple to be on the outside of your journal. Um, if you do staple it the other way, you will end up getting lots of cuts on your fingers. So make sure that the smooth side when you're stapling, it's um, on the outside. And then all I'm doing is readjusting the measury thing. <laughs> the little, what is it called at the top? I don't know. It's like a stopper. It stops your paper from going further. <laughs> and I'm going to staple this three times. Now you can probably get away with doing just two staples, so one at the top and one at the bottom, but I feel like that center staple just really reinforces, adds that extra reinforcement to your pages. But um, if, and also if you want uh, everything to be more symmetrical and you want to make sure that your staple is definitely at the center of your junk journal, then grab a ruler and measure out, you know, and, and do a little pencil mark where that center is. And I don't know, I'm not very, like I, I, I'm not bothered if I don't use a ruler or if it's not super precise or perfect. I feel like it adds character to your project, like it looks definitely like something that you made. But if you want to be perfect and precise, that's totally okay. Up to you, completely up to you. Yep, I am done with my journal, so here are the pages. And thank you so very much for watching this tutorial. I'm gonna do a second video very, very soon, just adding more fun things to this journal. So make sure you're subscribed. And also, if you'd like to see more of my projects, you can find them on my Instagram account, which is Jeanette Lane Blog. And thank you again so much for watching, friends. I will talk to you really soon. Bye.